for the rebel to win it would mean everything it would be to be like a dream come true to be really great for the locality and especially for Michael here because he's a small trainer and very shrewd to have a horse in the Galway Hall is a dream and uh, we'll all get mileage out of it and that's for sure whether he wins or not I should to me it's to be great for everyone around and the excitement and the hype and the fact that we were odds on to be on crime line before we actually made it onto the, the races, so we'll take that any time. I'll be unbelievable, like, you know, to get a horse as good as Rebel to even run in the hurdle and get him to a fit. Um, if he does manage to win, it'll be all the early mornings, be worthwhile. I tell you, I, it's unbelievable if it does. We'll set this place on fire altogether. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Sweetman, the owner of Rebel Fitz, he's working from London in the banking and the exchange and he said he bought the horse to de-stress if that would be the word from work and that's what the horse is doing and he lo it's great contact for his family and himself. It has been a catalyst for the whole family to meet at race meetings and you know and even to keep contact with, with each other about the horse and what race they're running and all the rest of it. So, He's a talking point with the whole extended family. What he says to me, he says, he's everybody's horse and he's your horse. We started thinking about the Galway Hull around the same time as the entries for the Grimes Hull. And this Grimes Hull is very tempting. There's great sponsorship and there's no clauses inside it like you'd have maybe having to be entered in the sales or some nonsense. For the small man, it means you can go into the race. And we got into it. And in fairness to him, he won... He won nicely. Run the round of the final flight, and it's Rebel Fitz and Davy Russell who take up the lead from Captain CB in second. And the handicapper and everybody took a good broad view of the thing, and we got six pounds, which is probably very fair. Might be slightly lenient, but if I have any chance going to the race, you need it. Some element to look. I'd imagine the Galway Hall should be a very hard race to win. Whatever Jack says, he's a horse that ran very well. On the flat, he won a mile and six in heavy ground. Um, I'd be very afraid of him in soft ground, but he's a three miler, and hopefully his optimum trip is probably two. So we'd be willing to take our chance and we'd be happy. Travelling is no problem to know. Um, when he gets there, then we wash him off and everything is settled until we get to saddling. And then saddling, then he'll kick down the walls inside the stable and I'm stressed and the horse is stressed and the man that's looking after Mikey Cronin, he's the only man that seems to be as cool as a cucumber. <laughs> and that's the way it works, so it works fine. He's a small bit hot-headed and uh, he's, he's, he's who can deal with him. Like, he's a lovely horse to do anything with, but other than that, he's fantastic to ride out, even to have the privilege of riding him to, to super. Uh, he likes a good cut in the ground. He's a fine, hardy horse. He, he will take him on and he's not, afraid, he's not afraid of a fight. Temperament-wise with the horse, you get a horse that can go, get high or nappy as they call it or whatever. This fella, that's the way he is. Like, I'd be, I'd be highly strung myself around the yard, the little bits and, you know, you, you might be, look like a house angel, but I think the horse is the same. That's, that's his way and maybe he needs a little bit of that to kick backside or whatever you want to call it. He needs that adrenaline rush to give his best. So we're not worrying too much about it. Mikey Cronin, the man that rides him, he drifts in about half past nine, quarter to ten. So he'd be ridden in and he's thrown out in the paddock in for two or three hours. It switches him off. He rolls and he picks a bit of herbs off the banks and stuff like that. And he comes in and he's he's like the daddy of the place then. And my uncle then, you saw him with the first bushes and things. He comes up then and he gives him his few carrots and first bushes and little bits. But this is our main feed, our secret weapon, like the bushes, because they eat the bark off of the bushes, and it does them good to keep them pre warm and everything. It's just like chocolate, you know. If you, give, if you put out several things in the feed and out them, they go for this first. If we were to win the Galway Hall, it would be something that maybe when we are dead, as we as young fellas looking back on racing, we remember Ted Welch and maybe somebody before that and finally even winning the Grand National and stuff. And it would leave a little mark for Doe Hollow and the area that we were after winning the Galway Hall. I think that more for down the road. At the moment we'd be all excited, but we get excited about winning a pint a pint. 
Do you know what I mean? So we'd get great satisfaction. Could be and we'd buy maybe a couple of new jumps and we might get an automatic gate at the road and do little bits and pieces. And we'd have two or three great, well, I suppose we'd have one or two nights out and we'd be back to work again. Sure. Ah, come on. Hey, for that. 50 bits each way. <laughs>